What's up everybody, Brian here with BPS Customs. I hope your Thanksgiving was full of turkey and massive regret over eating so many dinner rolls and completely devoid of all political talk. Now with the holiday season officially upon us, price drops on PC hardware will make it the perfect time to get into the new PC of your dreams. Maybe the PC of your dreams is a console killer, $350 system like I built last month. Maybe it's a well-rounded VR machine like I built right here. But maybe you need a little more Oomph. A few more cores and threads to power through some workstation tasks and make it out with plenty of time to spare so you could go bake Christmas cookies. Well, that's what my November edition of the best PC you could build will be focused on today. An entry level X99 system. So this video will be a little different than the rest in this series. Instead of focusing on a specific price target and building towards it, I want to start with a utility target and work backwards. The X99 platform has been around since 2014, and with the exception of the Broadwell E refresh earlier this year, has remained largely unchanged. It's the choice of many creative professionals who regularly use their machine for CPU intensive tasks like video encoding, heavy mathematical computation, or any number of multi-threaded calculations. So let's say you're pretty sure you need more power than Intel's mainstream lineup can provide you, but you don't have $1,700 in disposable cash lying around to drop on an i7-6950X. Where do you start? Well, you start right here with the i7-5820K. This chip features six physical cores and 12 logical threads, a 50% increase from mainstream i7 offerings like the 6700K. It also boasts 28 PCIe lanes, providing significantly more bandwidth for SLI setups and more robust storage configurations. The Broadwell E-based 6800K offers very similar stock performance and the ability to max out your memory configuration at 128 gigs versus 64, but less overclocking headroom and a slightly higher price. If you're just looking to get your feet wet on the LGA 2011 3 platform, this is the chip you want to do it with. You can regularly find deals on this chip for around $300, which is a complete steal. Now I will say that if the price of the 6800K comes down to match the 5820K, the 6800K would be the better value. Now speaking of the 2011 3 socket, be forewarned that motherboards featuring this socket tend to be quite a bit more expensive than their LGA 1151 buddies. For this build, we're gonna go with the ASUS X99A2, a refresh of an older design by ASUS that comes with out-of-the-box compatibility with both the older Haswell-based 5820K as well as the newer Broadwell E chips. This means that it will be able to handle our entry-level system as well as much more expensive CPUs if we choose to upgrade in the future without having to update the BIOS. The X99A2 offers a bunch of features that I love to see on motherboards like SLI support, onboard power and reset switches, a postcode readout, beefy VRM cooling, and a neutral color scheme with an IO shroud. Now let's keep in mind that this build has a lot of flexibility built in. If you're not a fan of ASUS or want a black and red motherboard or want a different form factor, there are many boards out there in the $200 to $250 price range that will suit your needs. The best part about X99 is that manufacturers recognize that this is an enthusiast platform. And as a result, most of the motherboards on the market are fully featured. Now, one of the biggest benefits of going with X99 is the ability to run quad channel memory. No matter what memory capacity you choose, you really don't wanna skimp on the number of DIMMs here. Even if you wanna stick with 16 gigs of RAM at 2133 speed, which is likely fine for most tasks, invest in a four x four kit. This kit is from our friends over at Corsair. It's a four by eight gig kit of their newest memory, Vengeance LED, running at 3200 megahertz. I have the white version here, and I think it's gonna look pretty sick in our build. Now, choosing a graphics card for a build like this is also a very personal decision. You need to know what kind of processing power your GPU will need to have and shop accordingly. Personally, I think going with anything less than a GTX 1060 in a build like this is unwise and it's even likely that a GTX 1070 should be the baseline. Granted, you may not need a gaming GPU at all if all you're doing is crunching numbers, 
But keep in mind that the X99 platform does not have an integrated GPU on the die. So you'll need something to connect monitor to regardless of how you set everything up. Cooling our shiny new processor is not as easy of a task as you might think. All 2011 3 chips sport a TDP of 140 watts, quite a bit higher than the mainstream Skylake processors. They also generally overclock really, really well, meaning that you're likely looking at having to dissipate quite a bit more heat than you're used to. These chips also don't come with a stock heatsink and fan, so you'll need to purchase an aftermarket cooling solution. Now for this build, we're using NZXT's brand new Kraken X62. NZXT sent over a bunch of stuff for us to use in this build, and I haven't even had this thing out of the box yet, but I'm pretty excited by how it looks. It's a 280 millimeter closed loop liquid cooler, and we have these awesome air RGB fans to pair with it. We're also gonna be building in the white version of NZXT's S340 Elite, the tempered glass version of their best-selling S340. The Elite also features better cable management and a handy magnetic puck that you can use to hang headphones, a VR headset, or banana, I guess. Power and storage are the most flexible parts of an X99 build. Choose what makes the most sense for you and your budget and what you've put into the system so far. I'd recommend an absolute minimum of 550 watts for a power supply and at least an SSD boot drive. Today we're gonna to be using a Corsair RM650X paired with these awesome cables that Cable Mod sent over for this build. I'm also gonna be dropping in a Samsung 950 Pro M.2 SSD and two OCZ Tryon 150 2.5 inch drives. So that's it for the specifics of this build. Let's put this bad boy together.
it guys, that's a wrap on my entry level X99 system. It really came together well, all the colors really matched the way I really wanted it to, and the performance is not too shabby. Now you will see that this system obviously underperforms our $1300 system in a lot of gaming applications, and that's very specifically because the GPU we used here is a 1060, whereas that system had a 1070. That's not to say that an X99 system couldn't be kitted out with a 1070, a 1080, or a Titan X or something along those lines and make it a formidable gaming beast. But this system is more geared towards productivity. And those results actually show themselves very well in our Asus RealBench test and our Cinebench R15 test. Also, I didn't show this, but the Firestrike physics score for a 5820K blows away even a 6700K. Now the Firestrike physics score is based entirely on CPU mathematical computation. And that's what this system is supposed to be for. It's supposed to be for heavy productivity like we talked about in the intro. It also happens to look pretty awesome. So if you have this thing sitting on your desk with the clear tempered glass side panel on it, people are gonna stop and stare. This thing is really a head turner. Now a couple things that I did wanna mention in my shots, my B-roll and things of that nature, even photos that I've been posting on Twitter, I've been having a difficult time capturing the actual green that these air fans are producing, which is really vibrant and really matches the GeForce GTX logo on our 1060. I'm not really entirely sure why I'm having a problem. Maybe the white balance of my camera is a little bit off and I can play with it some. And I actually might be able to adjust it in post-production so that it looks good on video. But just know that the color reproduction on these fans that are controlled by the cam software is extremely impressive. They're also so bright that I did not need to use the wide beam LED strips that were sent over by Cable Mod specifically for this build. Now the wide beam strips are Aura software controlled so you can use them with Asus motherboards and control them through the software that's provided by Asus but I didn't need to do that. I actually thought about putting them in the system and I thought this might be overkill. This is a clear glass window, so there's no tint to obscure the interior. So there's no need to brightly illuminate inside so you could see through the glass. The glass is so clear that the combination of the fans, the Corsair RAM, and the Kraken X62, which has a light up pump, really did plenty to provide lighting for the inside of our case. Nevertheless, though, I do want to say a big thank you to CableMod for providing the cables for this build and, unfortunately, the lighting that we did not use. I also, of course, want to thank NZXT who provided us with the case, the Kraken X62, and the air fans. So down in the video description, not only will you find links to all the products we used in this build, you'll also find a link to my new merchandise store. So go check that out, pick yourself up a mug or a shirt or something along those lines. Also in that general area down below this video, you'll find the like button. So maybe check that thing out or the subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed. Please leave a comment. I wanna know how do you build an entry level X99 system? Is the 5820K the way to go? Should you spend the extra 60 or $70, go with a 6800K? Is that really worth it? Should you put a more powerful GPU in the system? Is the 1060 holding the system back? I feel like it might be, but for somebody who's not looking to game, it's more than enough. So thank you guys for watching, as always, and I will see you in the next video.